Hi, everybody. We're just going to wait um, a minute or so to let others join in. We've got about 35 people joining today. Um, so we will just give them a few minutes just so folks know um, the session is being recorded and the recording has already started. Um, so just in case you pop on to say hellos or do anything um, or your videos, just be aware that the session is already being recorded. And we'll give it about two minutes and we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks to those of you who are already on, definitely some familiar faces there. Excellent background, Caleb, thank you. Mine is an actual photo from one of our programs, so I still think I win, <laughs> but well done, sir. So we're just gonna get started in still about another two minutes. I see Abigail, Michaela, Grace, Emily, Sadie, hey Sadie, Mitch, welcome, welcome. Of course, my phone rings. Turn that off. So, we got about one more minute until we'll get started. And hopefully, my computer will behave, although, no promises. Welcome, Catherine. Hey, Charles, nice to see your name up there. All right, so I'm just gonna let this float for about another 30 seconds until we get started. I know you all have a lot to do and I certainly do. Um, recruiting your reviewers for your applications when they get sent in. So we'll get rolling. Hi, Christine. Hi, Silvana. There's some more names popping in. Do, do, do. All right, so we're gonna get rolling and let others join um, as they see fit. I know people have busy schedules. Um, and again, this is just a quick reminder that this session is being recorded. Um, it is being recorded so that um, for those who have scheduling conflicts with any of the virtual information sessions um, can have the opportunity to watch. It's also being um, recorded um, so that we can share um, the wisdom and knowledge of, of Aurora and Caleb and, <laughs> and Ethan and others who are gonna join in and share some experiences who may not be on every call or I'm um, sorry, webinar so that others can benefit from, from their wisdom. Um, so this is being recorded. Um, it's up to you as to whether you share uh, yourself on video or audio. Um, I will let you know that um, I'm gonna be sharing a lot of slides and screens. It's going to be slightly challenging um, for me to monitor the chat as questions pop up. Um, we can do Q&A at any time. I might do like a checkpoint um, on Q&A, um, but if you do pop something in the chat, I might miss it just because I got too many screens going on at the moment. If, if um, you would like, I'd, I'd be happy to be a chat monitor and just be the voice of the chat. Would that be useful? Oh, yeah, that would be cool. I wasn't sure whether you'd be able to stay the full time, but you know, as long as uh, you're there, I would welcome that. Um, I want to also let you know that, I mean, all of us probably know by now that Zoom can be a bit temperamental, especially as you're switching um, screens back and forth, and I can't see everything you can see. Um, so if at any point I try to switch my screen over and I start talking about my new screen, but it's not the screen you see, <laughs> um, if somebody could delicately unmute and um, 
let me know. Um, Cause again, I won't see it in the chat, um, but let me know. Cause I can't again, always see what you're seeing. Um, with that, um, I am gonna start sharing my screen. If somebody could let me know again by audio um, that that is positively happening, that would be great. So let me see if my Zoom will behave today. Of course, the computers all pushed a major update last night. So let's see what happens. Yeah, I can confirm right. visual on your screen. Yes, thank you. All right, success thus far, although not wanting to jinx things. Okay, so if you are on this Zoom, um, hopefully you are here to learn about um, our currently open opportunities um, with NC Space Grant um, and one also open in partnership with NCC Grant. Um, so if you are on the wrong Zoom, you may exit now, but uh, hopefully everybody's in the right place. Just wanting to make sure. Um, I just want to give a quick overview of, of who Space Grant is, like who we are, what we do, why we do it. Um, for those of you that may be new to us, um, Space Grant is a national program. Um, it um, appropriated by Congress. So we are funded directly as a line item by Congress administered by NASA. Uh, we are located in all 50 states plus DC and Puerto Rico. Um, here in North Carolina, though, we are able to tailor the program to the needs of our own state, um, what our universities are doing, what our industry is doing, and so on. So we're following the big international and national trends. Um, in all things space, but we also um, have our ear to the ground in terms of what the needs are in North Carolina, again, in partner with um, those we work with, which include, of course, NASA, um, inclusive of what's happening on the International Space Station, um, as well as the state of North Carolina. Um, our offices are located at NC State University. Um, we have a number of industry partners as well as K through 12 museums um, and all that good stuff. Some of you may be aware that um, astronomy days are taking place this weekend um, and we are a partner for that. We bring in their, their keynote speaker. Um, so if those of you that are into astronomy, I know there's a few of you on the line right now, you might wanna check out astronomy days and be sure to say hi to our team members, Jovi and Sasha who are there. So anyway, so that's kind of like the setup and it's important for you to know that because I know, especially for some of you that are undergrads and maybe planning on going on to grad school, um, out of state, you can find a space grant um, anywhere in the country. So then a little bit about what we do. Um, we like to say we're developing the next generation of explorers um, in terms of the opportunities that are open. Um, that term may, de may describe researchers. Um, so basically, in, in short, what we do, we think what NASA does is pretty cool. Um, we hope that you do too. Um, hopefully that's why you're on this call. Um, and so hopefully you find something about it as awesome as we do. Um, and then we can convince you to research that or study it or get involved in a team so that you can learn some new skills, learn a new research topic, learn some kind of STEM endeavor that will help us build um, a future workforce with a talent um, base that is as diverse as our country. Um, when I go to a conference or something like that and people ask me what to do, um, I somewhat kiddingly say we make astronauts. Um, but there is truth to that. There are two former space grant students who are astronauts. Um, astronaut Christina Cook, who many of you may um, from recognize her name or her face, um, is the longest serving female on station, meaning the International Space Station. Um, and she was a student um, of engineering at NC State University. Um, in a few classes back, um, astronaut Zena Cardman um, was a science student out of UNC Chapel Hill. Um, Christina has already the distinction of being the longest serving female on station. Um, Zena Cardman is um, being trained and is a candidate, although not, we won't say the candidate, but one of the candidates being trained to be the first female on the moon. Um, so it all started right here in North Carolina, and it started with um, undergraduate scholarships and um, going on to do fellowships in North Carolina 
or beyond uh, with space grant um, for their graduate studies. Um, so you too may be able to become an astronaut. But it's okay if you don't. Um, I will never be an astronaut. I don't want to go up in that little tin can and I'm scared to death of it. So you don't have to become an astronaut and that's okay. Um, there's plenty of value in other parts of our workforce in NASA, commercial space um, and other industries and beyond. Um, and then recognizing that that is why we do what we do through internships, um, through different ways that you can learn to be part of a team and through primarily what we're going to talk about today, which is fellowships and scholarships. So I just wanted to give you a bit of a background about who we are, what we do and why we do it um, in hopes that maybe you're a little bit more familiar with um, space grant and um, the types of things we do. Um, but I'll dig a little bit deeper into that as we go. So um, most of you are probably on this call because there is money on the table. And that's what we're going to primarily be talking about today. Um, we're going to be talking about the two currently open opportunities with North Carolina Space Grant. And that is the Undergraduate Research Scholarship. There are 12 of them this year. Last year, um, in past years, there's been 10 or 11, but this year we have 12. So we'll be bringing two extra students into our Space Grant family. Pretty excited about that. Um, we've also got um, 13 this year, graduate fellowships. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, and on this slide and repeatedly throughout um, our discussion today, you will see deadlines, deadlines, deadlines um, for both um, yourselves and the people who submit letters of recommendation on your behalf, um, because there will be no extensions to deadline and there will be no exceptions. And I'll be pretty stern about that, but I will mostly try to be pleasant and fun about the rest of it. Um, but hopefully you are here for either these two opportunities or one that we do in partnership with our sister institution, North Carolina Sea Grant. Um, there are two awards, up to two awards this year at 10 grand each. Um, and again, same thing, deadlines, 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 no exceptions. <laughs> so let me just make sure to be clear. So um, we're going to primarily focus on those three opportunities today, um, but I will hit on some other things later in our conversation. Um, although that has to do with like the NASA internships, our space symposium um, and some other opportunities, but I'm going to really um, dig deep into these to, to talk to you about these today. Um, that said, I'm, I'm quite certain um, all of you don't want me talking at you for an hour. Um, and what matters is, you know, hearing from, from your peers, students themselves about maybe their motivations for applying to a space grant, um, their experience with the application process, um, and a little bit about their experience with it. So I am going to um, pop off and um, I think I have seen first Ethan um, and then we're gonna do um, Cullen if he is on and then Aurora. I also know there's quite a few other familiar names um, on the, the, the webinar right now. So any um, current scholars are welcome to chime in, but let's first hear from Ethan. Um, then we'll hear from Cullen if he's on. Then we'll hear um, from Aurora, who I know is on, um, and then we can open the floor to other current recipients who want to um, drop some knowledge on you. So I'm going to try to stop my share, um, and then if any current students can um, unmute and share their videos, um, let's go ahead and hear from you. So let me see, is Ethan on yet? Maybe Ethan's not on yet. But I see, I know- Ethan, uh, Ethan is on, he's trying to talk, is on, but we can't away. hear him. Uh-oh, Ethan, where are you at? Oh, I see you, hey, Ethan. I can't hear you, but I can see you, right? You. Oh, there you go, hey, Ethan. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you, thank you for that introduction. Right. Um, sure, drop some wisdom on us. I'll, I'll try my best. Um, <laughs> so yeah, basically my experience, um, I guess I was a little bit daunted at first about the application process just because I knew there weren't that many um, <clears throat> awards to be awarded. And um, I just wanted to make sure that 
I, you know, gave my best through the application. So I would say kind of how Sandra said, don't, as far as the deadlines, like sp space it out, um, like working through the application would be my recommendation for that. Um, and then I would say having a good relationship with your faculty mentor um, is also a really important part of the application process. Um, I mean, I meet with my advisor every week, sometimes multiple times a week, and um, having a really good relationship with, with that is a really important part of the um, space grant, I feel. Um, I also think during your application to, um, I know some of the feedback I got on mine was that when I was more focused on like um, being like myself and more, um, I guess, yeah, like more personable, I guess, and like explained why I was interested in my research, why I felt it was gonna be impactful um, for my goals and my um, future, that that's a really, really big part. So explaining the science, explaining um, what you're doing and what you hope to achieve is a really important part, but explaining why it's important to you and what you hope to get out of it um, is a really big part as well. Um, so those are some of the things that I'd recommend, um, but it's been a great experience so far. Um, I, yeah, I've, it's given me a lot of opportunities um, to learn, um, to work with other people and um, present, uh, hopefully presenting at a couple of um, conferences uh, this semester. So um, that's gonna give me some more experience too, so yeah. That's awesome. I also um, noticed that you said space it out and we love space puns here at our office because we're ridiculous human beings. So um, let's go ahead and continue. Um, the more space puns you all can drop in, the more fun this conversation will be, but no pressure. Colin, over to you. Hi, um, I'm a graduate student. So I have the graduate research fellowship. And for me, when I was thinking about the application, my research often leans very fundamental. So thinking about ways in which it could be applicable to space research and to engineers and to like a wider audience was one of the more challenging parts for me and really, you know, emphasizing why the research was interesting um, for me and also why the research would be interesting for other people as well. Um, and that's, that's feedback I got online was um, focusing on the, the applications portion of it for sure. Yeah, that's a really important point. I'm going to touch upon that later, but just like you said, so there are there are reviewers that read these, and um, some of them may be experts in exactly what you do. Some of them may be generalists, but explaining um, why what you're doing is important and why it's important to you really is fundamental to your application. So excellent point. Um, Aurora, you're on deck. She has gotten many awards, so has much experience with the process. You're up. Uh, I would also say I have experience of failure because the first time I applied for this, I didn't get it. And I got a lot of feedback that my my proposal wasn't space focused enough, even though I thought it was. And so I I took some of that, the like the the advice I got that was a critique of my earlier proposal and used it to make a much better proposal in the future. Um, so so advice number one is is if at first you don't succeed, try, try again, because like it's it's not an all or nothing, you know, you you might, we're probably going to be in school for a little while longer if you're doing it at the beginning of a grad school thing. And if you're undergrad, you know, earlier in your your thing, you know, uh, and still have another year or two left, please like, don't give up. Um, my second advice is, yeah, keep it very space focused, which is just kind of to 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 echo what Colin said about thinking about ways to connect your research to what's going on. Um, and I, I think I found it. Uh, my third piece of advice is like there are multiple parts to what you have to write. There's like your personal statement and then there's like connecting what you're doing to the mission of the space grant. Some of those things can be kind of like easy because they're not like the meat of your proposal to brush off, but they actually can help you like if you don't 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 think anything isn't important on the on the application put put a lot of effort into really connecting what you're doing to the mission of the space grant in addition to describing what you're doing and describing personally why it's important to you. Like all those things matter. Um, and then uh, uh, I would get someone who is has no idea what you're talking about to read your proposal. 
Um, because if you you need to just be able to explain what you want to do with your science or your research to any kind of well-educated person and have them understand it because you don't know who's going to be reading it and you want to make sure like your motivations are really clear. And also if someone's like, oh, this is really cool, like that will give you feedback or someone's like, like, why is this important? Then you realize you need to to kind of make your case better. So so that those are the pieces of advice I would give. That is great advice. Um, and I will definitely be reiterating some of those points together um, later. And so, um, I don't know, there's a few other familiar names and faces on there, Caleb, Charles, even Sadie, any of you guys wanna drop some knowledge on us in terms of your um, motivations for applying or experiences to applying or why it's a good idea to apply? I mean, no pressure, you don't have to, but. Uh, sure, yeah, I can say a couple of things. Um, I guess the the reason I applied, or at least I found it very valuable to apply, was I the project that I was applying to get funding for was very new. Uh, like I started it the month before I applied for funding. And so it was useful for me in a lot of ways to give some structure to what I wanted to do, because writing a proposal means you have to have specific questions that you want to answer, specific ways you're going to answer them, and then desired outcomes. And so in working through the application process, even though my project was very, very much in the like early stages, I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. Doing the application kind of got me to that point. So that was very useful for me. Um, it was also very uh, useful to talk to my mentor and like have my mentor read my application throughout its various iterations, both because it gave uh, an opportunity to get some expert feedback on the science parts of the proposal. And then also it uh, it kind of got the, the advisor bought in a little bit, uh, like it clarified what their role was gonna be in the project, which is very useful to say, you know, should you get the award starting the next year or whatever, this is what we're gonna do and this is, you know, so they can budget their time and their commitment to your project as well. Um, so yeah, I, my my main piece of advice would be to let the the application kind of uh, help guide your your thoughts of where your project is going to go, and then also work with your mentor very closely on it, uh, so that come the time to actually start working through it or continue to work through it, the roles are very clearly defined and you get all the feedback that you need for a good application, so. There's Excellent a- advice. Yeah, and I bet that made your uh, letter of recommendation a lot stronger too. Sorry, go ahead, Aurora. I'm just, the being the voice of the chat here, Lenny is, wrote a question, how relevant is high school stuff slash experiences or just focus on college experiences? Um, so everything that, that um, has gotten you to where you are and everything that's directing where you wanna go has importance and relevance. We're gonna to get to um, some of the essay questions that you're being asked to write on soon. Um, and some of it is talking about why you're curious um, and what you're studying, um, how you got to that point. Um, and so this, you do have opportunity to explain maybe you were in a club or maybe something made you curious and, and how you got to where you are. Um, so everything about um, you has potential value to your application. So as we go through some of those essays in a little bit, maybe you can tuck that in the back of your head. Like, are we asking you for high school transcripts? No. Um, does, um, again, what piqued your curiosity have value? Does your club experience, does your sports experience and being able to commit and follow timelines have value? Yes. Hopefully that answers your question, although other students um, who have done this are welcome to chime in on that point as well. I just saw them nodding your head, so I'm just going to say that they agree with that statement. <laughs> All right. Um, any other students want to add anything or we can continue if that's cool? All right, let's roll. So I'm going to go back to trying to um, share my screen again. So if anybody could hopefully um, affirm that that has been successful, I would appreciate it. We see it. Sweet. So there's some of the people that you talked to and the brilliant things that they have had to say. Um, 
So let's um, let's start digging into some details. And so thanks to um, Aurora or anybody who's monitoring the chat. Hopefully I will answer most, if not all of your questions um, throughout this, but if not, again, um, we can get to some Q&A. Um, so here's some eligibility. So I wanna make sure that we first address these um, so everybody's clear on who may or may not apply. Um, first of all, as a student, you must be a US citizen. Um, it's a federal grant paid with federal tax dollars. And so they want us to support US citizens. Um, if you are not sure if you're a US citizen, I always like to tell you, what does your passport say? Are you allowed to vote legally? Um, those are the kind of things that should give you an indication of that. Um, so you must be a US citizen, according to NASA. Um, you need to be conducting research relevant to what the RFP asks you for, right? So something in STEM, something related to NASA, or in the case of the Sea Space Fellowship, um, NASA and NOAA. Um, so unfortunately, this is, um, again, according to the next point, you have to be in a STEM field. Um, there are other NASA opportunities that have to do with arts um, and, and the other liberal arts, but not these specific opportunities. Um, you have to have a minimum 3.0 GPA. That's a NASA thing. Um, we follow that standard for the purpose of these um, opportunities. Um, I am aware that some of you go to institutions that may not follow the, the point structure. Um, that said, it is a requirement of NASA to demonstrate that you have a 3.0 or above. So you need to call your academic admissions office and ask them about an equivalency um, or, or how when you're applying to jobs or internships, you're supposed to demonstrate that they should be able to give you advice. Um, if you are having a problem with translating um, your GPA, um, give me a call or drop me an email and I can talk to you um, about how students have addressed that in the past. Um, you must be enrolled full time as of fall 2023. So no funding if you're not enrolled full time. Um, so whether you're a community college um, student transferring in the fall, um, whether you're, for example, you know, graduating as an undergraduate and going into your master's program, whatever it is, you have to be enrolled full time in the fall and stay enrolled full time. Um, hopefully that is clear and I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, we understand that in summertime, some of you are not enrolled full time. That is okay. That is a major research period, but you have to be enrolled full time. Anytime you drop below full time, you become ineligible for funding. Um, you have to be studying at an accredited university in the state of North Carolina. Uh, we understand that there are students who are from out of state, but going to NC State um, colleges and universities, and that's okay. You can be from Virginia or California as long as you are going to a school um, in North Carolina. Uh, you cannot be um, a North Carolina resident going to a school in Virginia and getting funded. In that case, you'd have to go contact the Virginia Space Grant. So hopefully that is crystal clear. Um, and they are becoming uh, strict. We are now going to be enforcing the only two awards per program. So you can get two as an undergrad or two as a grad PhD, um, but no more than two per program. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, our board just wants to make sure that we're giving um, more students opportunity across the state. So those are our eligibility requirements. So any questions about that? Great, let's keep flying. Um, so here's some frequently asked questions or facts. Um, so the purpose of, of these opportunities is to give you a chance to gain new knowledge, skills, and abilities, right? So it, it's not to like enter data into a database for your, your faculty member who's doing the research. Um, you know, it's, it's really, we want this to be an opportunity for and about you, right? It's not so the lab you work in can get more funding, right? This funding goes to you, not to buy equipment, you know, for your faculty member in the lab. It is, it is for you um, to become a better um, student. It is for you to become more employable in the future. And we want to know what, what you're going to gain from this. Um, so that is the purpose of why we're doing what we do. 
Um, so we are looking for 12 month research plans. Um, it is a 12 month award. Uh, 12 month research plans are strongly preferred. Um, and yes, you are getting paid and you are expected to do something over the summer. Um, so for example, if you plan on going backpacking across Europe over the summer, maybe this isn't the right thing for you. Um, if you have to get another job to pay your bills, we appreciate that, but we are paying you and we want to see that you're planning your research or doing your field work or getting access to samples or setting up your lab. Like we want to know that something is being done in the summertime. Um, we do appreciate circumstances where, for example, um, somebody might get a NASA internship over the summer. Um, you cannot be funded for two NASA things at the same time, but if you give me a call um, and write very clearly in your proposal about what exactly is happening, um, we will have conversations about like prorating. So like go to your NASA internship over the summer. I won't pay you for the summer, but I'll pay you for your academic year. But that has to be worked out with me in advance. Um, it also has to be clearly stated in your proposal why you have an abridged research period. Um, typically, the cycle goes um, like, let's say you're a PhD or a grad, your summertime is super heavy lab or field work. Your fall semester is super heavy analysis, right, data crunching. And then typically your last semester is like report writing. Um, we were talking about um, spacing things out. Um, there's an example for what you would want to do in your timeline. So that would work. Um, we've also had cases, especially for grad students where they're graduating in December. Um, again, you'd have to work it out with me in advance and you'd have to be very clear about how you're going to get like a 12 month period of research in nine months um, about how heavy you plan on doing it in the summer and one semester. So your timeline and your research plan better be crystal clear because you are competing against students who are doing a 12 month research project um, and you're being basically graded for that. So that's gotta be really strong. So I'm not saying it's impossible. We have funded people on abridged periods, but you gotta be like crystal clear in your writing about that. So hopefully I've made that abundantly clear and given you some good tips and information about how to address that and manage your expectations. Um, your research, I know, especially over the summertime, you can be at your university or college, but we know some of you also go like to a lab or you have to, like, if you're doing astronomy, you have to go to an observatory somewhere. Like we know that some of you may be off site. What we need to know is just that you're being supervised somewhere by somebody, um, and that you're following your university policies. Um, so it's part of your application. We'll ask you like where you're going to be. So you just have to let us know where you're going to be. Um, but you don't have to be at your university as long as you're being supervised by somebody somewhere. Um, if you're off site, like I said, at a lab or a observatory or at Langley or, you know, something else. Um, and finally, like we strongly encourage applications from students from HBCUs, MSIs, smaller universities, everything. Um, this is a statewide program um, and we do award um, fellowships and scholarships statewide. Um, and they come in waves in terms of like who gets them. Um, and it's not tied to any university. Like I appreciate that I sit at NC State, but like I don't review these. I don't have any towards a bias to um, NC State students as I'm sure my <laughs> NC State students on the line will attest to. Um, you are graded the same as everybody else. Um, and I'll say, it, and I love them, but uh, like, uh, you know, it's okay if you're from a, a smaller university and you think, well, how am I supposed to compete against someone from Duke or NC State? And I love me my Duke students, but they kind of got their butts kicked last year and <laughs> some other universities got a lot of fellowships and uh, they didn't fare as well. So like you, you don't know who's going to get awarded. That's why you have to really take your application seriously. Um, and you can come from any university of any size and still get an award. So we just want everybody to understand that. Um, and in terms of being from HBCUs and MSIs, um, absolutely, please um, apply and make sure to tell your story and why it's important to you. It matters to us. All right, any questions about any of these facts? 
I know some things are popping up in chat. I can't see them. Maybe they're things there's, all addressed and there's, we can hold there's, to the end. Or there's a question from the chat that says, um, this is from Nicholas. It says, if your research applies most closely to a more terrestrial NASA mission, like urban air mobility with UAS vehicles, would that be a val valid mission to apply under? Um, yeah, we're going to get to that in a little bit. Um, it's under one of the NASA mission directorates um, for, for space tech. So heck yeah, it would. And it's um, a topic I love. Unfortunately, I'm not for you. I'm not a reviewer. Um, but it is important and it is under a NASA mission directorate. So you would just have to make that case in your application. And we're, we're going to get to all that mission directorate stuff. Um, anything else, Aurora, or anything that can wait to? Okay, great. All right, of course, now my slides are not wanting to change. All right, there we go. All right, so application instructions. Um, and I know some of these slides are a little bit boring and tedious, and I'm going to get into the weeds in a little bit, but like I cannot stress this stuff enough. Um, and hopefully the, the, the words of wisdom from our current fellows and scholars sunk in um, that you really need to carefully read the website and the RFP to know and understand what it is that we're asking of you. Like, I, hopefully I've written this in an absolutely crystal clear way. Um, if you have questions, um, I know that some of our, our um, fellows and scholars have also offered to answer questions um, to help you. Um, I'm here to help, but, you know, read things carefully and follow the application instructions carefully. Um, give time to fill that stuff out. So I, um, so they, they mentioned earlier that like, it's pretty straightforward, but there's an, and I'm gonna show you all of this stuff in a little bit. So hang in there through these slides first. Um, there is an online application and it takes some time to fill in your name and your address and upload your transcript and put how many years of school you've been in. So like give yourself time. Don't try to do everything like the night before it's due. Um, I always kind of tease my students like, you know, if you're grabbing a coffee, like maybe just like put the TikTok down for a few minutes and like put your name and address into the application system instead. Like, you know, it doesn't take long, but like we don't want it to come as a surprise to you that you got to fill some some things out in an online form. And, and I'll walk you through that in a little bit. Um, there are, um, be, you know, before you log in or as you log in, there's sample application essays. I can show you, and I'm going to show you exactly what the system looks like. So you're familiar with it and you're not nervous in a little bit, but like before you consider this, you can go look at the system and see what it is you have to do. And then the great advice we got from a student, like space out your time to like address certain parts of like the application system or the essays. And I'm gonna, we're gonna show you all of that. So hang in there. Um, they've also tell you how you like, you really gotta thoughtfully describe like your goals in your research and like explain like, why is this important? Like, how is it relevant to like urban mobility? Like, why should we care? Like, why does that matter, right? Why should you, the average person or, or an academic person or NASA person like care about that subject matter. Like explain it to us, tell us why. Um, and then clearly explain your research plan and methodology, right? So we can say something is so important and we know it's important like air mobility, urban air mobility. But like, if you don't have a really good research plan, if you don't tell us exactly what you're doing and how you're doing it and how it builds your knowledge, skills and abilities, like as important as the topic is, if we don't understand what it is you're doing and how you're doing it, you're going to get dinged on that. So you got to think through that. Um, so align to what's being asked. Um, there are so, 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 so many links online on, in these RFPs to our strategic plans, to NASA's mission directorates, to, you know, to see in space. Like the links are there, take a little bit of time to look at those, it's all there for you. Um, and again, like make sure we understand um, the knowledge, skills and abilities you're going to gain. Um, and for those of you that are that are on the webinar that are doing C in space, um, don't shortcut your plans to present findings. We'll touch on that in a little bit, um, but we've seen a lot of on the C space fellowship side of the house, we've seen some just marvelous research proposed, but then like a very important part of that application is to sh pass it forward, to share it outwards, to go to conferences, to do public outreach. And so you could have the best research plan in the world, but if you're not telling us how you're sharing it, 
you're going to get dinged in those sections. So again, like follow the instructions and all of those sections matter. Um, and, and I'm going to show you all this stuff online. So again, hang in there through the slides. Um, so just some really quick tips to reiterate kind of what I'm saying here, like go online and do your homework. If you don't know what a research plan is, if you don't know what a methodology is, like go ahead and Google that. <laughs> like, look what goes into a research plan. Talk to someone at your university, like make sure you know what it is you're supposed to be included. Again, I've written pretty detailed instructions in the RFP, but if you're not sure about it, like take some time and do your homework. Same thing, NASA Mission Directorate. I have provided so many links. Um, NASA does just about everything. <laughs> um, you can find something you're interested in somewhere in NASA. Um, same thing, strategic plans, just kind of beating that dead horse because it's so important you get point scored for this stuff. And same thing about your knowledge, skills, ability. Um, some tips that, that I would like to give you and tips some, from some past recipients. Um, do make sure that you're checking word counts um, and page limits. Um, this year for those graduate research fellows, you don't have a word count, you'll have page limits. Um, a lot of students always advise to draft something in Word, spell check, check it with others, right? We've already heard from our students today, have someone else read it, is it clear? Um, so we, we don't suggest that you log in and just type your um, essays into the system. Um, we suggest that you do them. And then um, for grads, um, I'm sorry, for undergrads, you will cut and paste. This year for our graduate students, we are allowing you to upload your essays as PDFs. And the amazing news about that is because we are now allowing you to do graphs and photos and images and all of the things you've been saying, I can't do this. Well, now you can, but that also means that you will have to upload each of your essays as an individual PDF with word limits. Um, and then C space, you just have one big PDF that includes your letter of recommendation in it. So all of these kind of have different instructions and in ways, but um, I'm particularly excited about seeing the images and graphs and things from the grad students and PhDs this year. Um, so make sure you're really following those instructions there and uploading or cutting and pasting accordingly. Um, and again, sorry, question, go ahead. Question, relevant question to this from the chat. Yes. Um, it says, will we have access to example applications to get a more in-depth idea of what was required for each essay? Um, so no, um, you can see like what the form looks like and on, on the website and in the RFP, there's a link to things that students have researched in the past, but you will not have access to a full application. Um, of course, that is unless somebody that's on the call right now is willing to share theirs, but no, we don't share um, past recipients um, work just because there's a lot of personal information in it and we have to follow all those policies. So you won't get to see, again, someone's application unless anybody's willing to share it. Um, so a student um, talked about this a little bit about cultivating that relationship with mentors to make sure that roles and responsibilities are clear. Um, from our side, you know, we often hear from, from our reviewers and our, our mentors who um, have done this have said, when students ask them to write a letter of recommendation like a day or two before, it drives them bonkers. Like they want it like weeks in advance. <laughs> like, right, nobody wants anything dropped on them at the last minute, right? So like, let them know, I plan on doing this. This is gonna happen. This is the deadline. You're gonna get a link from the system. And that's a really good opportunity, like our students have said, to cultivate that relationship with them. Um, and get their input on your research. Um, again, those of you who are on this call now, excellent idea to be on the first one because now you've got like a month and a half to work through that. Um, but again, like ask them in advance, this thing is 10 points. Um, and to be honest, some awards are, are made or broken with it, you know, fractions of points or points. And so these, these letters matter. Um, and if you're nervous about cultivating a relationship with the faculty um, member, um, if you're an early undergrad, again, I advise you that like, this is our job. It's what we're meant to do. Um, so don't be afraid of doing that. If you're not sure who to ask, um, seek advice from your academic office or your department. 
Um, and you can even um, send me an email or pick up the phone and I can help you with that too. Um, you've got a, a great group of people that are there to help. Um, if you're a socially anxious person like I am and you're afraid to ask, it's okay, you can do it. We're here to support you. Um, you just let us know what you need. Um, so there's that. All right. Um, we're almost to the point where I show you the system, but I, here's where like I'm giving you like some really deep tips. And I believe you're, the, the students on the call dropped this knowledge on you earlier. Like there are points we have told you how, like how and where they are going to be scored. So make sure you are writing to the points. Um, like there so much goes into like, why are you interested in this? And what is your goal? And like, what is your plan? And you will notice like grad students, like mucho points there on your research plan because you're a grad or PhD student. We expect you to know that, right? So like undergrads, like we wanna really know like what your research goals are. And then we wanna know like, why are you interested in STEM? And like, how is this going to impact your career? So like, we're telling you like in terms of for writing your essays, which in case you haven't figured out, reflect exactly where these points are scored. Um, make sure that you're paying attention and scoring those points. So hopefully that is pretty clear. Um, mathematically, they add up to 100. Um, that makes my life easy. So there you go. Um, C space, yours is slightly different. Um, so you also have an online application process that is not dissimilar to this. You are also strongly encouraged to follow the RFP and online process. You will upload as a single PDF as opposed to individual essays. And that includes any letters of recommendation, not only from faculty mentors, but also partners. So like if I am going into this wetlands and I am doing this research with somebody, you have to get a letter from them. Um, I am going to go to this museum and present like maybe get a letter from this museum. Yeah, we're looking forward to having this student. So like you have to kind of put a little bit more work up front into putting letters into your package and you have to do it in advance because you have a single PDF, which you also may submit um, images and graphs and photos. So that's exciting. Um, so uh, feedback that we've got from our review panel is make sure that you address C and space. So we've gotten some really strong proposals, amazing um, sea or inland water um, proposals, but like where, where's the space part of it, right? So it's great um, sea, but you're missing the space and you get pretty hard um, dings on that. Um, make sure that you're really in detail describing the tools or data sets that you're gonna use. Hence, that's a big part of the space part of it. Um, so don't short describing those tools and data sets, where you're getting from, how you're using them, factor that into your timeline, et cetera, um, factor into your budget if you have to purchase data sets commercially, um, you know, it's a $10,000 scholarship. So if you need to purchase data sets, you should do that as part of this. Um, and we've seen a lot of um, students, again, shortchange their outcome products and communication products which are part of your grant. So even if you've got like an amazing research topic, but you, you're short on your outcome and communications, like you're gonna get dinged for that. Um, you do for C and space have to provide a resume. You've got time to clean that up now. It's gotta only be two pages. Anything over two pages will get cut out of your proposal. So anybody for any PDF in this who goes over the page limits, Anything over the page limits gets cut. So don't think you can sneak it in. It will not upload. Um, or you'll think it'll upload, but then when your reviewer gets the final package, anything over that page limit will be cut out of what they see. Um, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> There's a little tip for you. Um, and for, for C space, um, you don't really see a point system. Yours is a little bit different. So for grads and undergrads, I review like, I, I like recruit dozens and dozens of reviewers um, and each proposal has like three to five reviewers who may or may not be experts in your area. And they have all these pointing, point scoring rubrics and they score your proposal and all of that. For um, C and space, there is a panel and you are ranked. So each panelist will rank their top, you know, one to three or one to five or like whatever it is. And then we as a group get together and come up with our top one or two. 
Um, so those are slightly different, but we just want you to be aware of the process for transparency. Um, and so now you know. All right, any questions again? Audio chat? Boop, skipping ahead. All right, I'm going to switch screens and I'm going to show you the actual online application, which you can also see at any time. I'm going to show you how to access it, but I'm going to walk you through it just for those of you who aren't familiar. Um, you can get a little bit more comfortable with it. Um, grad students remind me if you haven't done so already, if I don't show it to you, I'll show you like how it's a PDF now instead of essay questions. So, but I'm going to start with undergrads because I feel like it. So let me switch screens and um, Hopefully, bear with me as I try to navigate this. Come on, there we go, hide. Okay. Can you, can you all see my space grant screen now? Yes, okay, yes, thank you, Ethan. All right, so if um, you have not had a chance to look at our um, Space Grant website, first of all, why not? It's awesome. <laughs> we have amazing communication specialists working on it. Um, we're gonna talk about the Space Symposium in a little bit. Um, but in terms of finding where to navigate um, for our proposal, a lot of you may have gotten a direct link on social media or like in an email from a faculty member, but um, you know, website navigation 101, it's not that hard. Um, I'm going to get, again, go to the undergraduate research scholarship. Um, so it's, it's pretty long and there's a lot of scrolling, but it's, it's not that hard. So here again, you'll just find a lot about a, a lot what we talked about today, eligibility, I can never say that word, eligibility, deadlines, application instructions, a lot of stuff that we talked out about today. Um, instructions really, I'm laying out what the essays are right here in black and white. Um, talking about how you're going to be scored. Again, tons of links everywhere in this to the NASA mission directorates and the North Carolina um, Space Grant Strategic Plan. Um, very importantly, we're not going to talk about this today, but you're expected to be aware that um, nobody gets money for nothing. Um, there are awardee requirements like submitting a paper, presenting a poster at our symposium. So you want to be fully aware of what you're being asked to do um, for your scholarship or fellowship. Um, if you are like me and you like to scratch notes out on things, you can um, download the RFP and print it and scratch some notes out. That's always helpful. Um, you're on this session, so good for you. Um, we had a question about whether you can see a sample application. We don't allow that at this time, but we do have a link where you can at least see what um, students last year proposed and were awarded, like what they're researching, and that may um, help spark some curiosity. Um, but what I want to take a few minutes to go through um, right now is the actual, like what the system is going to look like. So there's this nice big red link here. So hopefully nobody misses it um, about applying. Um, this year, you will go ahead and do a new user registration. Um, that, that even goes to students who have applied in the past and it's just because it's a new cycle and we don't want you like going into last year's or anything. So you're going to um, register and create a login and you can go in and out as many times as you want, like as you're filling out your application or uploading one essay at a time, like once you're registered, you can go in and out of the system as many times as you want. It's not one of those applications where as soon as you log in, like you have to finish it. So um, I just want you all to be aware of that as you plan your time. Um, so I want to show you here and you can click this too. This is like open to everybody. You can actually see what a sample application looks like. Um, so this is where some folks are saying, like, make sure you plan some time to like do different parts. So up here, it's pretty simple. Your, your name and your contact info, um, congressional district, it's a lookup. And the reason that we ask you that, um, just to give you an idea, like I said earlier, we're federally funded um, by Congress. And like a month from now, I've got to go to go to Capitol Hill and 
and ask for our funding and I have to tell them why our students are so great. And I get to say, hey, representative of district seven, here's this student in your district and here's why you should keep funding me. So like we, we need to know some of this information just so you're aware of why we're asking you that. It's not for political purposes. It's so that like we can continue to get funding. <laughs> it's for me, not for you. Um, here's where you're gonna put Again, be clear, your university are attending in the fall. So where are you going to be full-time enrolled next year? So like if you're a currently a community college student, but you're transferring to NC State for the fall, like you need to put NC State in this box. Or like if you're an undergrad and you're graduating and you're going to grad school, you need to put like where you're going full-time to grad school next year. So just be very clear. It's about where you're going to be in the fall, not right now, because we know some students are in transition. Um, major, um, we understand that some um, institutions do not uh, require a major declaration. Um, and some even not until your senior year, and that's fine. Um, just you might want to generally put like what STEM area you're in. So like maybe it's like electrical engineering or composites or biochemistry or like what's the big picture of, of what it is you're like studying and researching, right? Um, university standing. Um, obviously, this is the undergraduate, not the grad, so you won't see yours there. Um, you will notice that there's not freshmen in the box. It is it is very rare for freshmen to get um, grants. But what would happen if you're a freshman now and you're going to be a sophomore next year, go ahead and put sophomore because you will be a sophomore next year. So I understand that it says spring 2023. Um, I've asked our system administrator to add freshmen for that purpose. Uh, clearly, he's not gotten around to it yet, or maybe it's just not reflected in the sample. But you can go ahead and put sophomore and, and clarify that later in your application, and we'll deal with that later. Um, don't panic. Um, but for example, if you are a community college student and you're transferring for your freshman year somewhere, you know, might want to take that year to settle into your studies before you apply for extra bonus research. Just a little tip there. And there's probably some students online that might agree. Um, again, expected date of graduation. Um, it's fine if you're non-traditional, just like ballpark it for us. Um, and same thing again, GPA, NASA requires a 3.0. They've not changed that, even though some universities don't do that scale. But again, call your academic office and be like, yo, what am I supposed to put in? Um, if they don't know, call me, we'll figure it out together. Um, and here's where you're going to upload your PDFs for any relevant. So um, high school transcripts are not needed um, unless, of course, you're a freshman. Um, so again, if you're a community college transferring, we need that. Um, if you, and so basically, like we really just need like your semester, right? So we need like your last fall semester or any transcripts that are relevant to what you're studying or that demonstrate your current GPA. Does that make, hopefully that makes sense. If not, I can clarify. Um, some other little drop downy boxes, no big deal. Like, do you plan on getting it? Like have fun with those, don't worry. Um, this box is important because this is where you, you're gonna put your research mentor or also the person who's gonna submit that letter of recommendation on your behalf. And this is important for a couple of reasons. You need to get this in the system because um, a system email gets generated to them once you apply that they're going to, that here's a little email, notice is at spacegrant.net. So they're gonna get an email from us asking to submit the letter. And this is where we're saying like, don't wait till March 13th, submit, and then tell your advisor that you need a letter of recommendation because they have like a day to do this on your behalf, like two days to do it on your behalf. Like even if they don't get that link from you because you waited to the last minute to apply, <laughs> at least they've already written out the letter and they're ready to upload it. So like, I cannot stress that relationship with your faculty person and getting them to write the letter in advance. And then whenever you press that button, that then gives them a day or two to upload it. I mean, obviously the earlier, the better, but at least if they have that letter written in advance, then they still have a day or two after you've pressed the submit button to get that in the system. So again, cannot stress that enough. 
they have a day or two, but you don't know what their life is like. You don't know what their class schedule is like. Make sure that letter is done. If I don't get that letter from them, um, your application is incomplete and I, I can't review it. I just can't. So um, title, just say what it is. Um, again, we've given you a link about past research recipients. Um, most of the type, some of the titles are like fun and snarky. Um, if you're not the creative type, like just say what you're doing. Don't overthink it. Don't stress. Like you're not, you don't get points scored based on your title, but do make sure that your title is like clear to the reviewer. Cause we want to make sure, oh, this, this student said they're doing this. Cool. Right. So don't overthink it. Just make it clear. Um, so undergrads again, um, and I put these um, questions in the RFP and online, but again, you can go here, you'll see where the word counts are, and you'll see this why we're recommending that you go write them in Word somewhere and then cut and paste them here. Um, again, undergrad, sorry, you can't do charts or graphs or images. Um, you can scooch some tables in here, but you have text box. Um, if all goes well with our graduate students and PhD this year, then we'll we'll think about it for next year. But for now, we just want you to work on writing clearly. So this is, again, why we tell you to go write it somewhere else, do a little word count, and then slap it in here. Hopefully that makes sense. And again, as if we didn't hammer you over the head enough about it, more links to the mission directors and strategic plan for your reference, different word counts. Um, and here, so you're going to have to tell us which mission directorate you're aligning to. So earlier, the example um, of, of, of urban airspace was brought up. Like, is your angle on the aeronautic side? Probably. It might be on the space tech side. Um, so figure out your primary. And if there is a secondary, you can do that as well. Right. So again, you know, research and make sure we know. Um, and this is important, not only so that you understand where you fit into the world of NASA, but to be honest, we have to report out to NASA what our students are researching based on the mission directorate. So we have to give reports based on our budget to the mission directorates, telling them I am supporting X number of students with X number of funding towards your mission directorate. So like we really need to know that and NASA does look at that. So it's really important that not only you understand it, but we're demonstrating our value for our grant to NASA. Um, so take a little time to make sure that's crystal clear. Um, and so here's where academic and career interests. So this is where, you know, our students were um, explaining earlier, like why it's so important to like tell us about who you are and why this matters to you. I mean, you're not being judged on it, but we but um, we know that like not every student's a straight A student, not every student comes to this earlier clearly. Like we wanna understand who you are and your pathway and why this has value to you and why it matters to you. Like, you know, it's so easy for some students to find their academic and career pathways and, and other students struggle and that struggle has value. And so we wanna understand like, I've never thought I'd have an opportunity to get, you know, a, a NASA research grant. And, and this is why it's so important to me. You know, nobody in my family has ever done this. And I really want to do this. And here's like, we just, we really want to hear your story and why it's impactful to you. You as a person matter to us. Um, and again, I think you've heard that from our students earlier. Um, and same thing, intended impact. Like what new things are you learning? Are you learning new scholars, um, scholarly work? Are you learning new skills? Um, tell us what you're learning that's new. So, you know, again, this is your chance to not say, well, my faculty member wants me to sit there and enter data into a database for his research, like not interesting. Like we wanna know how it's gonna help you. So these are your essays, really short ones for you to tell us your story and get to know who you are. Um, and again, I told, told you earlier, this is just like, we just kind of want to know where you are this summer um, for many um, different reasons. Um, here, you're just confirming that your research mentor is on board, right? We heard about how it's important for your research mentor to be aware that they have a role and they're kind of supervising you. Um, so here, you're just acknowledging that and you're acknowledging that you got to write a report. Um, this is where you're going to put any other federal funding, including space grant. This is where we've got to make sure that maybe you will, you've only had two awards. 
Um, this is where I got to make sure I'm not double dipping into NASA funding. So if you're getting funded out of one NASA bucket, you can't get funded out of another NASA bucket. Um, this is where like, if you're getting a grant from NSF, I just have to verify that like, if I give you the scholarship, like you're going to be able to complete your NSF stuff. So like, go ahead and put it. And then what happens is I'll pick up the phone and call you and be like, Hey, I see you're also doing this NSF thing. Like how many hours a week is that? Like, is this work going to, you know, detract from that? Like, or can you really get this done? Like maybe you were, you know, like we're going to have a conversation about your workload essentially um, and make sure that we're not breaking any um, federal funding requirements. Cause if you get, if you double dip NASA, then we get in trouble and I don't want to get in trouble. Um, this is optional information. Um, again, it just helps us to know like who our applicant pool is. Like, are we targeting our students in a way that represents the diversity of our state and our country? Um, you're not being judged by any of this. It just helps us to know like who is our applicant pool and where do we maybe need to do better if we're not reaching everybody. Um, I see, Aurora, that you've taken yourself off of mute, so I'm guessing somebody has a question. So, yeah, there, there are two questions in the chat. One is, okay. what, if, what if there's a NASA grant playing for your PhD stipend, but through your academic institution, is question number one. And second question is, do you only want to know about past federal funding, or do you want to know about funding from other sources, too, um, for, such as a grant from a private group? Okay, Ooh, excellent and tricky questions. Um, the NASA double dipping is really tricky and they're kind of picky about it and we get different guidance every year. So typically, like if you are being funded already by NASA as a stipend, like I can't pay you at the same time because you're already being paid by NASA to, to do something. So technically, I'm not supposed to fund you again to, to what may even be the same thing. Like that's a big no-no for NASA. However, if you're unsure or if it's ending or like there's some something we have to look into on that, um, email me or call me um, and we could sort it out now. Um, or if that thing is up in the air, you can always put it in this box and apply and then we can hash it out, like assuming you get the award. So um, let's follow up if there's a specific um, case. Um, later, but I hope it makes sense about how like we can't fund you twice like for doing the same thing. Now, if it's a totally different thing, that's a different conversation to be had. Um, we had a student last year who had an NSF and a NASA. Normally, we can't fund a student out of two federal pods at the same time, but her research was so different on the two and we went through her work balance and with her mentor to sign off that saying like, yeah, she can handle both and all that this stuff and it kind of all worked out. But um, we, we just like, let's talk about it on a case by case basis, reach out to me by, by email or phone, we can set up an appointment and kind of go through it and understand it together. Um, and then I'm sorry, what was the second question? The other about question private? is did it, about like, like private grants. Yeah, and there's a third so one after that when when you get yeah, sure, sure, sure. So yeah, so same thing, like go ahead and put that in there and then, or like before, like let's have a conversation about your workload. Um, money is great, but being overworked comes at a cost that sometimes is not worth it. Like we don't want you to take our research grant and then like really irritate your other donor because now all of a sudden you're doing this. So like transparency and working through workload is really important and it's important to do upfront. Um, so we want you to put all of that stuff in there, but if you have a specific case question, like let's hash it out. But having had private or community or organizational funding from someone in the past um, does not conflict at all with what you're doing now and in the future. If that hopefully answers your question. If not, oh. again, we can email or call on specific cases. Uh, some of the, the reply to that is yes, thank you. Cool. Um, next question, if I'm also applying for a NOAA scholarship and uh, do I need to list it even if I haven't gotten the scholarship yet? Yes. Strongly recommended. And, and then you can put applied. Um, and, and again, it's like, it's the same thing. Like, let's like apply for everything. Like, that's my advice. <laughs> like, apply to absolutely everything you can, and that's open. 
because you'd rather open a door than close it. So like apply to everything. And if you get this and you get that, like, let's have a conversation. Um, and again, you may have to choose or you may be able to balance who knows, um, but, but go ahead and apply. And then at the time of award, assuming you get one, we'll have that conversation, um, but never close the door before you open it. Um, you never know what's going to happen. Just again, let's talk about it. Like, I, hopefully our students will tell you that like, we will do everything we possibly can to support you to the absolute maximum of our ability, as long as we're acting in your best interest and not breaking any rules. Like that's our bottom line. So list it and let's talk. Hopefully that makes sense. Re reply to that is okay, great. Thank you. Cool, cool. Um, should I keep going or anything else? Do, 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 do. Um, and then finally, this is just your certification. And it's just acknowledging that like, if I get an award, I know I got to do stuff to get this money. <laughs> so we just want you to know that like I talked earlier, there's no money for nothing. But I think our students um, earlier have told you that the scholarships and fellowships are really um, a benefit to them. And so... Um, hopefully you'll all see it the same way. Um, I do have more slides on some other opportunities that are with Space Grant, including NASA internships, the symposium, and so on. But let's go ahead and can you all see me again? Okay, jazz fingers. Let's make sure that we can like, maybe let's take a little pause and do a little bit more Q&A right now. And then I'll get back to telling you about more funding opportunities to Space Grant. But any more Q&A on, on what we've talked about today or what's currently open? And you can also ask, like, if you don't want to hear from me, like any of our current recipients can chime in and can answer any questions too. I'll, um, I'll put my email in the chat. So if anyone has any questions, um, then they can email me after this if something pops up. So, yeah. Thank you, Ethan. So any other questions? So like, if you have like a specific personal thing, email me or call me. Um, if anybody has like um, a broader question, don't be shy. Or again, I mean, you can be shy. If you're shy, that's okay too. I'm, I'm, I'm a shy person, generally speaking. You can email me if you're not comfortable bringing it up in this forum. That's perfectly fine. That is what I'm here for. Um, so. Thank you, Aurora. Aurora's uh, put her email down in the chat as well. And they're spectacular students who are super helpful. Um, and I, I'll, uh, sorry, I'll go ahead and drop this plug, Aurora. Um, you might wanna like, Aurora has done some amazing outreach and things on social media. <laughs> so if you're not following Aurora to see like, the clear like benefits, like maybe Aurora would be so kind to drop any of her socials or websites in there so they can check those out. It's a little Aurora plug for you. Um, and thanks again, students for allowing others to contact you. Um, we are, we just follow Aurora on Twitter. <laughs> We're big um, NC Space Grant Twitter fans, so follow her. Um, okay, no other question so I can continue about more ways to get funding from Space Grant and other cool things. Do we agree? All right, so I am going to go back to my PowerPoint um, and we're going to plow through some other stuff like pretty quickly because I know we're already over time. Um, all right, can you all see my screen? Okay, thanks. Um, so we did just want to remind students that right now um, the NASA internship application portal is open um, and space. So it's um, let me explain a little bit of the process. You go online similar to this application. So like you can almost double dip in terms of some of your like application stuff and writing. Um, you go into this portal. There's a link right there. You set up your application. You kind of go through the portal and you see what internships look really cool and you apply to them. NASA then selects students who they want. We get a list of those students from NASA and they ask us, hey, would you pick up funding? And we usually pay for at least seven undergraduates to have internships. In past years, I think it's gone up to like 10. Um, 
So you have to go through that NASA internship portal. You can't like call you or your faculty member can't call Langley and be like, hey, this guy wants you. Like you have to officially go through this system that is in order for us to pay for you. Um, so please make sure that you do that. Um, the application system is open now. Offers are made on a rolling basis. So like, don't wait until the deadline because by then, like, who knows, like maybe we've already picked up seven students, right? Or 10 students. Like, So the earlier you get your application to that, the better. And once you've created a portal, um, for this for NASA, like you can apply, like, so like when their next year's internships come up, like you already have registration in the system, you're already set up. So that's another one of these things that I will tease you and say, like, put down the TikTok and like do these applications <laughs> instead. Um, so uh, that's just a little tip for you. So, um, but again, we don't choose you for the NASA internships. You have to apply through the portal and then they let us know. Um, there are other opportunities for funding with NC Space Grant. Um, if you don't want to do an individual research project, if you're looking for team experience, um, right now I've got funding for 11 universities across the state um, to do these team competitions that are like maybe by NASA or an association or somewhere. Um, if you're on our website and you look under news, um, just scroll around or use the search term team competition and you'll see the teams that we're currently funding. Um, they're faculty led, they're big teams. Um, our teams go on to do great things like, you know, UNC Charlotte like wins rocketry like every year. No offense, NC State, you're in there too and you always score really well in different categories, but we've got different teams um, just crushing it. Um, and we this encourages you. So like we hear from our employers and NASA all the time how much they value students who have teamwork experience. It's always part of your interview. It's always part of your application. Um, get that experience now. You can do it through one of our team awards or just join a team or a club. It, it has value, um, create community. Um, we have two scholarships that are targeted to students at minority serving institutions or historically black colleges and universities. Um, there's two scholarships. They open um, next September, so they're academic year scholarships. Those will come out in the fall. Um, and then finally, if you are interested in becoming an educator, um, formal or informal, i.e. a museum or observatory or planetar uh, planetarium or something, um, there are scholarships um, for you as well. Um, information about all of these are available on our website um, and for release, you can follow our website or again, follow us on social media because that's how you get the most information about opportunities that not only we release, but anytime we get wind of a scholarship, a fellowship, a postdoc, um, an internship, a job, like we post those all on the socials. And so that's where you're, um, you'll get your latest and greatest as well as create community. Um, this is a huge one and I'm really excited about this. So on April 21st this year, um, we're doing our NC Space Symposium. Um, students, um, so you saw like as part of your requirements, like students who have scholarships and fellowships will pre present their posters. You'll also hear from some pretty amazing um, folks in NASA, the ISS, International Space Station, commercial space, um, subcontractors, like people, like all sorts of really cool NASA people. You'll also hear from current students. I know Aurora is booked to speak. Um, and you'll also hear from some alumni. So you'll hear from like some of our, our peeps about like, okay, I got this scholarship or fellowship where I was part of this team. And like, here's what I'm doing now. Here's how this is a springboard to like my career. Um, and then we'll have a career panel at the end where you get to talk to professionals um, from NASA or commercial space or whatever. Um, and I will tell you that if you go, I'm not gonna tell you, you have to go click. If you go to our website, we should have information on who our keynote speaker is this year. And I am particularly jazzed because it is incredibly timely and relevant. Um, so if you wanna submit an abstract for this, if you're not a current scholar, you can. Um, otherwise, do um, the registration to go to the symposium will open. It usually opens like around late February, March. Um, it's super cheap for students. Like you get access to all these people and you get food and all of this stuff. 
Um, and it's usually only like 25 to 35 bucks. So most of these conferences can cost you like hundreds of dollars. Ours is like super cheap. Um, and you get to meet us and you get to meet all these people. Um, you get access to all those professionals. You get some food, you get some swag. Like it's a fabulous day. Um, strongly encourage you to, to look out for that. And then um, again, just make sure you follow stuff on social media. This is where we're always, you know, send updates. Like we are well aware that email is of the dinosaurs. Um, and so follow us on the socials. Um, let me be clear. I will never dance on TikTok. You will never see that. And I'm quite sure that you're grateful for that. Um, but you will find us on other socials that are um, allowed. NASA is not allowed on TikToks. Um, but you will find us on these other places. So anything from deadline extensions to other funding opportunities, like I said, internships, jobs, like follow it because there's so much juicy stuff out there and we really don't want you to miss it. And we try to mindfully not blast tons of stuff out there. Um, so it, it, it's pretty conscious feed. So you won't, you won't get inundated by our blasts. So um, I think that's, I'm going to stop it there. I know we're already over time, but I will leave a few more uh, minutes if anybody else has any questions, comments, thoughts, concerns, anything else to add. I've answered every question you've ever wanted to know, or there's like 50 emails waiting in my inbox, which is okay too. Anything? The chat is just full of thank yous. Oh, cool. Well, I mean, you're all welcome. Again, this is this is all for you. So Space Grant um, is all about helping support our students on their journey. It's the reason um, it exists. We love our jobs. Um, hopefully our students um, have convinced you of why it's a great thing to do. Um, any of our current students that are online, do you have any parting words of wisdom or anything to, to share with anybody considering applying? I would say even like just just apply i mean even if you know you have other grants or other opportunities in the works like just take the time to apply because it's a really great experience and you never know you might think like i didn't think i was going to be awarded one but um i was and that was like a really huge surprise and made my year so <laughs> um so yeah if you have any interest whatsoever apply <laughs> yeah thanks ethan yeah, totally want to reiterate that the very process of don't don't think you're not good enough. Don't think that you're like, it may not work, so it's not worth the effort. As I said, I failed the first time I did it. But the process of writing a grant is so valuable for like learning how to think through a project and you'll learn just so much in the process. I have never regretted writing a proposal, even if I haven't gotten it, because I've I've just gotten so much out of you know like synthesizing the knowledge that I needed to do it. So just go for it. Awesome. Thanks. Like we always say the same thing, like go for it. You never know. Right. Um, so thank you all for taking this time and joining us. Um, I look forward to reading your proposals. Um, I look forward to answering any questions that you have. Um, I'm excited. Um, and whether you do or you do not, please come to the symposium. Um, we're looking forward to seeing everybody in person. Like I haven't even seen like Ethan or any of these guys in person because of COVID. So like, I'm just so excited to um, be in a room full of like fantastic students that inspire me in my job. They inspire our NASA colleagues and the future is yours. So take hold of it and um, show us what you want it to look like. Um, thanks all for joining. And um, I look forward to hearing from you and seeing you soon. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Sadie. Bye, everybody.